Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today, we're gonna to be learning about painting big, loose florals. These are acrylic paint floral paintings that are really loose and open to interpretation. This is the one that I will be painting for you today. You can choose to follow this as closely as you'd like, use my guidance, or kind of go off script. That's fine too. The supplies in general that you're gonna need are a canvas. You could also do this on paper or uh, some other surface. You'll need some acrylic paint, a water cup. You're going to need a rag more than likely. And then I recommend having a variety of brushes, specifically um, a filbert brush, a kind of a thinner brush, a angled brush, and you if you want to do big loose roses make sure you have a big flat head brush you could even use like a house painting type brush for this the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have a background you want to paint on if you're using a fresh canvas go ahead and start with that that's fine too but i like to reuse my canvases so this is me painting over an old painting and what i'm going to do with my background is mainly use white but i'm going to start kind of blocking in some colors that i initially thought i might want in this painting just kind of so that there are hints in the background uh, so i make put white all over and then i'm going to add some hints of green and purples and some other colors that i think i want in the painting Painting. This is a good time to maybe start deciding your general color palette. The green you'll probably want to put anyways just because there's leaves on any sort of flower. Then it's time to do the starting bits and I'm calling this casually because I want you to be casual about this. Maybe dot on some bright colors that you're thinking of stamens in just kind of general areas, vary them brush on just a few hints of leaves. And what we're doing here is kind of the equivalent of making sure we don't have a blank page to write on. Uh, Cause sometimes that's the hardest part is the getting started. So go ahead and just add a few little bright elements in the background, cause it will help us guide these different flowers we're gonna paint in. I like these loose floral paintings to be kind of layered. So the next thing I like to do is add some base layers of some leaves and vines because those are the best ones to kind of have as bottom layers. And here's the first little vine that's real easy to do. You make a kind of a stem and I'm using a filbert brush and just touching and kind of turning that brush on its side and pushing and pulling. And that's going to make the general shape of those leaves so you don't have to overthink how to paint them. And these ones I am doing where they are the same on either side because some different uh, vines you want to keep in mind, they have either alternating leaves or ones that are side by side. Then we're going to mix up a different green. I like to add in a little more blue to these ones with longer leaves. And for this, I'm using an, an angled brush and I put in the stem and then I take that angle and the further I get, well, the closer I get to the stem, I push down and it will actually help to spread out that feeling of that leaf going from a very thin to a thicker, but in a natural way. So you just drag and push. At this point, you make your decisions. I thought my canvas was still a little bit kind of blank on the background, so I went ahead and just threw in some kind of random leaf shapes randomly throughout the canvas, because I know that once we build our flowers on this, they'll kind of help add some detail. If you want, you can add some depth to those by throwing a little brown on, so we're not just green, green, green everywhere, because there are different tones. And use any brush for that. If you want, I also flicked some color because I know I want to make purple roses. And so I just wet down some paint and flicked it on there. And then I'm going to let all that dry before I move on to the next layer. 
Depending on the style you're going for, you could leave it how it is, or if you are like me and you like a little bit more depth because leaves have different uh, shades and values to them depending on how the light is hitting them, you can go ahead after that first layer is dry and mix up a slightly darker version of that green, maybe add a little more blue to it, and I just touch kind of the bottoms of these. It does not need to be perfect. We're going for imperfection here. Before I fill up my canvas too much, I want to add some big, loose flowers. Now, I want to do roses, and the best tool I have found for this is one of these bigger flathead brushes. If you need to, you could use a house paint brush, but you want to get some paint on that brush and see how I have clearly not mixed that paint on that brush. There's some darker colors or some lighter colors, so I've got a few different purples. And we want to very loosely touch around the areas where there's gonna be that center layer of petals. And I am centering this around those yellow dots I made, so it kinda looks like there's a little bit of yellow stamen inside of it. And for those side petals, we want to touch and then squiggle and swoosh down. So you can rewatch that a few times, be loose. The looser you are with the brush and the more open areas you leave during this step, the better. It's going to look more natural and we're gonna be adding more layers. If you overwork this, that's where it's going to start to look kind of goofy. Because this is a loose painting, you're going to want to keep an open mind and possibly consult some resources. I've got two here. One is this Botanical Line Drawings by Peggy Dean, I believe. And I often open this book up when I'm trying to decide shapes of flowers that I want and maybe even some kind of general colors. Um, and it helps me when I'm stuck with an idea. I knew I wanted some roses and then looking through this, I want kind of some poppies. And even though it's a drawing, I can use it. The other is the color scheme Bible. And so this enables me to go in and look at the colors I already have on the palette to kind of decide and inform the colors of those poppies. This is a loose painting, so nothing has to be 100% representative. I decided to go with kind of a yellowy poppy color. I know that's not the traditional one, but it will work. Okay, let's paint these poppies. And I put those in quotes on purpose because they don't need to be perfect. What I'm kind of looking for was just a flower that had some loose, flowy petals to it, as well as kind of a bright possible color. So that first one's harder to see. So we'll move on to another one that will help show it a little better. And so I'm using an angled brush here and see, I just blocked in three petals there. And for this one, I want it to be a little looser, so I might come in and kind of squiggle the brush and make a petal shape, pull a petal shape up. Then I might fill in kind of those back ones that you would see peeking out from the back part. And maybe there's even a little petal that just has fallen off to the side a little bit. That doesn't look like a flower now, but it will start to look like one in a little while. So. Do this across your canvas to fill in some of those kind of blank areas where they need a little more. Again, you don't need to overthink this too much. Make a petal, outline the general area, and maybe add in a little extra petal that's kind of falling off the side. We just want to have kind of the general structure shape of those flowers. We can be so loose with those flowers because we're going to do some more loose layering and with each layer, we're going to get more. You do want your paint to be mostly dry before you add another one on. I'm coming in with lighter purple as well as some white and maybe a little bit of orange and I'm gonna touch the tips of where I imagine those petals to be. I'm basically adding highlights to show Here's the top of the petal. Maybe it fell over a bit. Maybe this is the bulbous part, but I'm adding just some 
touches here and you just want to go for it. I know that's not super descriptive, but you'll get there. While we wait for our poppies to dry, we can add some of the leaf details to the roses. And for this, I did actually Google kind of the general shapes of seeing what rose petals kind of look like. They do not have to be perfectly representational, but you want to have them kind of in the ballpark of what they are. And again, I'm using that angled brush where I swoop and sometimes I push so that it gives me a little extra one and then I close it off and go in the opposite direction. Layering is key to any intriguing painting. So those poppies that I made in that bright yellow, I wanted to wait for them to be mostly dry. And then I'm going to lean into that poppy-esque color and add those dark, darker red orangey bits to both the centers and the bases of the petals, because you would see the center would have that dark color as well as usually the bottom that's closer to the kind of stem of that flower usually has more. And at this point, you can keep this really blocked in or you can try to blend it a little bit more. We are going for loose, so don't overthink it too much, but feel free to blend it if you wanna add, especially going along the direction of each one of these petals. Um, just in the direction. It doesn't need to be perfect, but showing the movement of that paint is going to help differentiate which petal is which one. Assess your painting when you start layering. Do you need to lighten areas? I decided mine needed a little bit more highlights to pop out a little bit more. Maybe yours needs some darker blues at the base to uh, shadow and give depth to the flower a little bit. Do what you think is right for your painting at this point with layering. But again, we're not completely filling in those areas. We want to be loose, leave open areas. We want this to be open for interpretation than it, that it's a rose, rather than trying to exactly replicate a rose and having something that doesn't work quite like we wanted it to. At this point, we are about 70% done with this painting. We want to at this point just fill in some of those gaps where we're lacking something. So I know I wanna add some more leaves and kind of branches to this. And I like to block in the direction that they're going to be going where I think that they're needed to kind of bring attention to a focal point first with kind of a brownish green stem. Then I'm going to again change to a, an angled brush. And for this one, I am gonna make a real C curve on one side and then another C curve on the other side. I want these to be more, I don't know what, kind of rounded but pointed leaves, almost like traditional leaves or something. And go ahead and block those in, add a little stem detail to each one of those. And as we add these little details, it's going to really help to add layers and depth to the painting again. That's really all we're trying to do. We're trying not to recreate a leaf perfectly. We're trying to get the impression of a leaf. So go ahead and block in and fill in some of those gaps. Greenery is a great way to do this. Another good way to do this is I thought it was kind of lacking in colors and it needed to be a little bit more rounded out. So I decided to do some of these kind of star inspired flowers. And I just, I picked that based on the shape I wanted. And I'm using an angled brush and just touching for each one and moving it towards the center. And I wanted to use 
that reddish in the poppies, but I wanted to bring it up a notch. And I think this really helped the painting, helped to balance it a little bit. And it also helped to fill some of the gaps and I can put those real bright pops that are, after you see them, they're not that as interesting as our other flowers. Uh, you can put them near areas where you want to increase the eye to travel and focus on that you really like in the painting. So for example, I put that there because I actually like that um, poppy in the upper left hand corner. So add in some details like this. You could add in dots. You could add in more leaves. This part is just kind of about filling in the gaps. Now we're in the final stage of this painting. We want to add some final details. This could be adding in more of those little flowers if you needed to, adding highlights like what I'm doing here, maybe emphasizing the centers. I didn't feel like these were looking super like poppies, so in um, this point of the painting, I'm going to not only highlight to really emphasize, hey, this is the top of a petal, but I'm going to go in with a darker color on the inside and some line work um, to kind of show, hey, this is the center of this flower and the lines do kind of signify either possible stamens or the creases within the petals on them. You can add in your dots to the center of the star flowers and that does seem to help make them pop out. Add in uh, leaves to the poppies. Remember, keep in mind the actual shape of poppy leaves and that you don't have to completely replicate them, but you don't want to do the same leaves you would for a rose as you would for a poppy. So here, see I put a real dark center in and then I did a little lines up and it really helps to say, here's the center of the flower. Like now they actually kind of look like flowers before they were still impressions of flowers. And now we have impressions of flowers, but you're like, yeah, that's a flower. Use your intuition. You know, you know where something needs a little work, but again, don't overwork it. These are loose. So here again, I said I, you want to reference poppy leaves and they are real kind of squiggly and they've got a lot of little branching pieces to it. So just, I just made some like brush strokes into the shape of one in general. It's not perfect, but I pulled it out and then I would kind of feather it to give the impression of all those bits and pieces that fit on to those leaves. You can re-highlight these. This is your final finishing touches. And in general, that's how you do a loose, big floral painting. By building layers, adding in colorful elements, trying to vary your color, adding in shadows and highlights, and mimicking without trying to perfectly replicate leaf and petal shapes. I hope this was helpful to you. I'd love to see what you do. You can always share things with me on Instagram at Lacey Walker Art or at Rebel Unicorn Crafts. I hope you have a magically creative day.